Today's movie involves Robin Williams and drag queens. No, it's not Mrs. Doubtfire. It's the Birdcage. <laughs> on the stage musical based on the 1970s French film. Now our American Birdcage takes more inspiration from the 1970s French film Le Cage a Faux. Now this film is one of the rarities of big budget LGBT films in the United States because people actually like this movie. Now our American film changes many things. For instance, instead of being based in Saint Tropez, it's based in Florida now. The houseboy goes from a black servant to a Guatemalan, I think. Come on, aren't you afraid of my Watermelon-ness? Your what? My watermelon my natural heat. The film revolves around Armand, the owner of a lavish drag queen nightclub, played by Robin Williams, and his drag queen partner, Starina, or Albert, played by Nathan Lane. As you can see, I've just gotten back from Safari, and look what I picked up, a new mom. <laughs> And look at her with accessories. They have their son returning home with a fiance, and there's just one little catch. His fiance's parents may not know that they're a gay couple, so their son Val needs one of his fathers to disappear for a little bit. And since Armand loves his son, he goes along with this. It's just for tonight. I understand. It's just while people are here. It's all right, my darling. It's nothing. It's painful, but it's not important. I'm leaving. Just one night out. The monster, the freak, is leaving. Needless to say, his fiance's family have problems of their own. Her father happens to be a conservative senator looking for political advancement. And shit has really hit the fan for him when the man he's endorsing has been found dead with a teenage prostitute. Jackson's dead. Oh my god. He died in bed? Whose bed? A prostitute? A minor? And black? What? He has to flee the scene and fast. They are going to meet Val's parents and a dinner party has been planned in their honor. The film was directed by the very talented Mike Nichols, a very capable and talented director. The film makes many choices that I actually like. Now the film can get a bit frustrating to a younger viewer, especially Val, an all around jerk and if you ask me, the real antagonist of this film. You'll find yourself screaming at the TV, okay I get you like this chick but don't you think you're being a bit of an asshole to your parents? You're only 20 years old. Have a little hope. About what? I, I mean, once they see you and Albert together, uh, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so good. Now I'm just. Oh god, what a mess. Calista Flockhart kind of takes a back seat in this film. A smart move by any actress when she has to share the screen with Diane Weist and Christine Baranski. And can we just give a huge shout out to Christine Baranski in this? She's fabulous. Someone should really make an appreciation society for all those blonde character actresses from the 1990s. You know, headed by Christine Baranski and Kathy Moriarty. She's like a born wasp and totally believable as a woman who fell in love with a latent homosexual. I have to say, I find the story of her detachment from Val strangely refreshing. How is he? He's fine. He wants to get married. Married? How old is he? It's not often you see a mother in a movie with that storyline where she's not the antagonist. She isn't played like a total monster with no feelings. She left him with capable parents while she pursued her career. And you, you've done well. Because of you? The money you gave me started this place. You should have gotten stock for it. She agrees to act like she was married to his father to cover for him being gay. This does not mean Albert is out of the picture. They went through a long, tedious process trying to make him pass as a straight man with very little success. Men smee. Smee, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Get the goddamn stinky down. <laughs> right, make your fingers like iron, all right? Yes, yeah, stop trembling. Oh, Hold the knife boldly. Yes. Yes. Strength. <laughs> The party is underway and the idea of making Albert pass the straight man is highly unlikely. So he agrees to stay out of the way and barricades himself in his dressing room for the evening. Catherine is on her way and the butler has even agreed to wear shoes, even though it makes him fall down. Call me. Perfect. Oy. 
It's the shoes. The party is a total disaster. Catherine's delayed, and her parents are getting a little suspicious that his mother hasn't arrived yet. And just when you think the duty is really going to hit the fan in this one, we get probably the best scenes in the entire movie. Albert emerges from his chambers, disguised as Val's mother. Oh, it's so nice to meet you, Mrs. Coleman. Goldman? I thought the D was silent. It is pronounced Coleman, isn't it? We've had some confusion. Oh, yes, Coleman. Uh, the D is silent in America. It's uh, called D. Lomont? or Cole of the Isle of Man in France, where Armand's chateau is, and Coldman in Greece, where Armand's work is, and finally the vulgar Coleman in Florida, where Armand's home is. So actually, we don't know where we are until we hear our last name pronounced. <laughs> And I see what's genuinely my favorite shot in this movie. Armand grins as he sees that Albert's talents the female impersonator are what's saving the day. And even manages to turn on Barbara's conservative father. Rich. I don't know anything about Jonathan Swift, but I know one thing about your mother. She's a very passionate woman who follows her heart, and I just love her. However, the real Catherine arrives and spoils the ruse. And unsurprisingly, Barbara's parents want to make a mad dash out of there. But little did they know the press was hot on their tails. Just when they think they're trapped, Armand and Albert have a sudden show of humanity for these people. And you know, since Albert and Armand are good people, they decided they're gonna help them escape in their own way. They disguise her whole family in drag so they can sneak out of the front door of their nightclub unrecognized. I kinda wish Val got in drag too. It probably would maybe like him more. Now this film was received positively by critics, and for a good reason, the source material is good. It was pretty much a guaranteed success, considering it was starring one of Hollywood's biggest comedic actors at the time. I want to take a moment to talk about how giving of an actor Robin Williams is. It's not easy to be the straight man. He gives a really subtle performance as Armand and he lets Nathan Lane take center stage despite being the bigger star at the time. But he does have his share of williams -y moments. Fussy, 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 you do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham, or Twyla, 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 or Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, or Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. But you keep it all inside. All right, just work on that, I'll be right back. The film is essentially a big ball of fluff, but with some great moments. And you can't help but recognize the huge risk they took, making both main characters seem like real people. You own half of my life, and I own half of yours. Half of the club? What does it matter? Take it all. I'm 50 years old. There's only one place in the world I call home, and it's because you're there. So take it. What difference does it make if I say you can stay or you say I can stay? And you really get the sense that they do love each other. I feel like the relationship between Armand and Albert is respectful where it needs to be. And what I like is the film doesn't go out of its way to make our antagonist, the senator, grow and change. He doesn't change his views of gays overnight, because that shit just doesn't happen. He still leaves that dinner party feeling the exact same way about gays, but he's learned tolerance. In my opinion, the only guy that needed to grow and change was that asshole Val, who didn't even thank his parents for the rude inconvenience he put them through. And with the huge exception of a lack of drag in this movie, I can understand why the producers were a bit weary on having drag throughout the film after the big bomb that Tuong Fu was critically. They wanted to approach it more delicately this time and a bit more subtle. Well, subtle enough. Oh, is tomorrow all right? Don't use that tone to me. What tone? That sarcastic, contemptuous tone that means you know everything because you're a man and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> I do everybody take it easy. Now, is it a hard-hitting gay parenting drama? No. It's as fluffy as cotton candy. But that's a strength in this film's case. It will hold your gaze, and if you can get past the ass hat bow, you'll be all right. I mean, seriously, that guy sucks. I could go on all day. 